Hello again everyone and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I am John and as always thank you so much for being here. Good topic for you today, one of my favorites. Let's do it. What scientific fact scares the absolute shit out of you? Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Scientific literature's conclusion on Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases in general is that the diseases start decades before the first obvious symptoms and that we need to treat them at this stage. When you exhibit obvious symptoms, it's too late. Your brain is already mush. If you get diagnosed with Alzheimer's at 65, you had the disease since your early 40s at least, and you experienced very mild symptoms but didn't notice them, and your brain fought like hell to compensate for the deficit. When you get diagnosed, your brain is already very severely damaged and will never recover from the deficit. The fact that your body can have advancing cancer and you wouldn't know it sometimes. Father-in-law's brother was walking through his kitchen and he fainted and hit his head on the counter. He was rushed to the hospital and they ran tests and he had stage 4 pancreatic cancer and his body was already in the end game. He was dead within two months of diagnosis. That shit terrifies me, and it can happen to anyone. Our white blood cells are fighting cancer cells on the daily. The fact that we can just get a blood clot and die, and not realize anything was up. The human body has so many ways of just suddenly dying, it's terrifying. I don't remember what it was called, but there was an event in the 1800s caused by solar activity where telegraphs operated on their own without paper, and I think caused minor damage. Should such a solar flare event happen again, it would destroy all of our internet network capabilities and other electrical gear. Anyone know what I'm referring to? This is officially called a teaser. If you stick around in the video, you will get the answer coming up. When the atom bomb was being created, the leading scientists associated with the project at the time had to calculate the flammability of Earth's atmosphere in order to ensure that detonating the bomb would not cause the atmosphere to combust. At the time, when the first atom bomb was detonated, the scientists still had not answered these questions, meaning that we legitimately just crossed our fingers and hoped we wouldn't set the effing planet on fire. Humans are stupid. Rabies. You can have it and never know until it decides it's time, and then you'll probably die. Kreutzfeldt Jacob disease. It's genetic. You won't know that you have it. When you know that you have it, there is zero recourse. It will eat holes in your brain and you'll die. That and fatal familial insomnia, also genetic. One of your parents woke up one day and couldn't fall back asleep until they died having suffered rapidly progressing neural degeneration, and it tends to set in around midlife, so you spend every day waking up knowing it might be the last time. You find it hard to build relationships and have a family because you know it's not a matter of if, only when, but you know you're going to see your golden years. The metaphysical aspect of consciousness. Where is consciousness? What is it? When does it really end? Where does it go when we die, when we sleep? How does it occupy our entire being without being physically present? We are quite literally the universe experiencing itself in a fragile little bubble on a moat of dust in a sunbeam. And yet, what exactly are we? That's the sort of question that keeps me up at night. I don't fear death. I don't fear world annihilation. But I am deeply unsettled by the mere experience of being aware. Less scary, more mind-numbingly depressing, is the dark era of the universe. When all the star fuel is gone, and it will be, and all the white dwarves have gone cold and dark, and they will, and all the black holes have evaporated away into elementary particles, and they will, the universe will be a cold, dark place forever. Well, if consciousness and life gets to that point, I mean... Will anyone really remember? But pretty wild to think about. Not trying to ruin your thunder. Every time you use an antibiotic, even for something mild like strep throat or bronchitis or traveler's diarrhea, 
you technically could get a C. diff infection from your wiped out gut flora, and that could end up a lingering resistant infection that leads to colectomy or fecal transplant. Antibiotics are scary, and there's a reason doctors only want to prescribe them if absolutely needed. Maybe not too scientific per se, but the fact that I could get hit by a car walking home from work and wake up in the hospital, go on with my life, meet the love of my life, and get married, have kids, watch them grow into their teens, and we all have a good life. Then one day I wake up in the hospital and find out I was in a coma, and none of it was real. The Pacific Northwest has a 600-mile-long subducting zone that is approximately 70 years overdue for an 8.8 to 9.2 magnitude earthquake, and nothing on the coast is built to withstand that. There has never been a strong earthquake on that coastline since European contact, because the last major earthquake happened in 1700. Unlike Japan, which had a comparable earthquake in 2011, the Pacific Northwest isn't ready for it, and things aren't built to withstand what's coming. Someday soon, Seattle, Vancouver, Portland, and Victoria are all gone to lunch six feet inland, shake violently for five to seven minutes, and then get hit with a 100-foot-tall tsunami. It's projected to kill tens of thousands, displace millions, and wipe out trillions of dollars of wealth, the second largest humanitarian disaster in North American history, second only to Haiti. And it seems like people are just pretending this doesn't exist. That viruses cannot classify as a living organism and yet behave as if they are fully aware of their surroundings and evolved to suit it. They behave like they have a brain, but are merely nucleic acids. Fascinated me since my first virology class. Your eyes have their own immune system, and if your brain even figures that out, then it will eat away at them, turning you blind. Methanol contains very little carbon, so when it burns, it's basically invisible. Can you imagine death by burning alive and no one can see the flames, so they can't put them out? The potential for false vacuum decay. It's possible that the vacuum state of our universe isn't really in its lowest state, but is instead in a false low. If something were to cause the vacuum to decay to its true minimum somewhere in the universe, this would spread at the speed of light, and when it reached us, we would simply cease to exist. No warning, no feeling, just gone. The Carrington event, here's your answer, a massive solar flare that hit the Earth in 1859. It took out all communications and damaged almost every electrically run piece of equipment. It almost happened again in 2012, but it missed the Earth by about five days. Scientists estimate that if one hit us again, it would cost the United States about $3 trillion to get everything back to normal. See, I told you, the Carrington effect, or the event rather. So. Uh, that's what it was called, and if it happened now, three trillion? I mean, just print it, right? What we're good at. Perception of reality is really just a simulation in your brain. Similarly, a dream, especially a lucid dream, can be as vivid, impactful, and profound as any waking moment in your life. For those that go into the deep end of lucid dreaming, the difference between waking life and dream becomes laughable. The Uncanny Valley. Even when it's extremely well done, humans have a trait that allows them to tell when an image or video of a person in front of them is not real, even with the most well done pictures and videos, more prominently noticed now due to CGI and digital art. But according to studies, this triggers a mild fight or flight response to us. This implies that at some point in our evolutionary history, we evolved the trait to warn us if something looked human but wasn't. I've read some theories that this was due to other races like Neanderthals, but considering we now know that early Homo sapiens actively crossbred with Neanderthals, that seems unlikely. So far, we have discovered many exoplanets possibly capable of life. However, the outlier seems to be us. Nearly every exoplanet is bigger than our Earth Yet, there's a chance we are the only planet that has life that we know of due to our inability to explore beyond the moon via shuttles and that, well, 
Everything seems made to kill us, even our own planet and race. Scarier, we have yet to explore even a tenth of the oceans on our green and blue planet. Oh, and we're overdue for another round of comet bombardment, worldwide extinction event, and a solar storm. Actually, no, we dodged one recently. All plant life dies if atmospheric carbon dioxide falls below 150 ppm. Before human civilization, it was at around 300 p.m. and slowly falling. When Earth was at its greenest and life exploded around the globe, the carbon dioxide levels were at about 4,000 ppm. That the average core body temperature of the human body is slowly declining and most believe as a result of global warming. Sounds good until you realize that our body temp evolved to just be hot enough to avoid dangerous forms of bacteria and more importantly, fungi, from infecting us as perfect hosts. At that point, global warming would no longer be our biggest problem for the human race.